Um, this is the third and final presentation as part of the symposium on the Arma project. And for this one in particular, I want to talk about the future of Arma because it's been something that has been asked of me a number of times uh, whilst I've been doing the presentation. How long will it last for? Because obviously my PhD is um, well, three years and we're just over the midway point. Um, what will happen to Arma after that? Well, I want to present to you a few ideas I have. Um, with regards to what uh, I, I believe to be a uh, potential uh, avenue for the arms that can go down. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is just turn on your computer so we can see some people have got them today. Um, or you've got a sync problem. Have I still got a sync problem? Or your mobile internet devices, of course, if you have them as well. Um, is it still? In this uh, address, and some people have mentioned it already, but this is the Orma um, address. And if you are a member, then please do log in, that'd be fantastic. If you're not, you'll, you'll see uh, this <laughs> in the, uh, the right hand corner. And you create account, don't tell me. Um, that's in the right hand corner. If you want to click that, if you haven't got an account, that'd be fantastic. If you've forgotten your password, then use those in the email notification system to actually let you know that as well. So, what's the uh, layout of this, the whole talk. Well, first, I'm going to talk about what is achievable within the time frame of my PhD. Um, well, I'm not going to do that first, but that's one of the things I'm going to cover. The first thing I'm going to cover is dreams, which I think they're the most interesting ones. Um, but the what more interesting for me personally is the potential, what lies in between those two, what is potentially achievable within that, uh, uh, the time frame of my PhD. So, a quick ORMA update. There are over 50 registered users on the site at the moment. I'm not sure how many remember the password, but there are 50 registered users. Um, there are 14 analyses that submitted directly to Armour, and that's not counting out the analyses that are uh, linked to external websites that don't fall under the same um, Creative Commons license. There are also 17 articles in the analytical toolbox, 16 <coughs> of which I've written, and David Hurst has um, actually written one um, <coughs> uh, uh, as well, which is much more in-depth than the ones I've ever written, so um, I do recommend you check and just to mention this point in time, there's also been less activity in the forums, which is something I'm going to get onto later uh, in this presentation, because I believe there's some reasons for this. Um, it's also referenced on a number of university reading lists, which is great to know. Um, and it's also, this is just a little bit of information, it's also <coughs> top search on Google. Um, we've overtaken uh, Orima Power, um, which, is, which is not so really looking for batteries. Um, here are my an, original aims and objectives in the first ever presentation I gave um, of when Oregon was in its infancy. Um, and I'm not going to read them out because uh, you can see them there, but I'm going to explain which ones have, have been achieved in this particular point in time and where we are um, in terms of the ones that haven't. So, first of all, yes. Mainly because I assumed that the forum would be the place where we could actually discuss and converse with, with regards to this taxonomy. Um, I had verbal discussions with many of my um, colleagues here, but um, yet has anyone actually submitted anything onto Arma physically so I can actually reference it? So that'll be something that I'll be, I'll be looking to try and to convince people to do in the future. Um, a toolbox has been created. It's not fully finished, and it never will be, but there's still a few things on the list that I want to personally add. Um, but if anyone else has got any ideas based on what's on there already, um, then please do either feel free to add it yourself or contact me and let me know what needs to be added. Um, this point on the objectives was uh, MediaWiki was the original, um, sorry, can everyone see it there? Great. Um, was the original platform, which is the same platform as Wikipedia. We've changed to a Drupal platform, which is much more intuitive. Um, if you're on the website, you might notice that. And finally, as a community, we've analyzed 10 uh, search secret music works. Um, as Andrew Hugo has mentioned, there's, some, there's a great variety, um, not just academic works, but also electronic from uh, Ben as well. Um, so I do suggest you have a look at them. I'm hopefully going to get up to 12 by the end of the year for my PhD. I'm sure we will. So, um, I, will I, 
I installed this thing called Google Analytics, which I'm sure you're all very much aware of, um, which is a plugin in Drupal which allows me to track uh, user activity that aren't necessarily people who log in, because this was something I wasn't able to do um, initially uh, with uh, MediaWiki or when I first installed the Drupal platform. Um, and I'm just going to show you. United States we've had 26, and you can basically see in various other places in Europe we've had, um, and, and Canada as well, we've had a number of hits. The point is that for me, it shows that not only I am logging into Arma, or not, sorry, not logging in, but looking at Arma. It shows that there's actually a world out there who's viewing it um, over the course of two months. And it's interesting just to see the breakdown of where that those kind of lie. Um, in particular, you can see, for example, in the United States, that the majority Basically, that there's 
no set review committee. And this is something that Coral Mount does pretty well, is that the whole idea is that you have a community there which assesses things that are on the website. So what, how this could potentially work is that, for example, a, um, an article is submitted, and then over a six-month period it's deemed whether it should be archived or not. And that's, in that sense, that's how the review committee works. So the Coral Mount community would decide whether it should be archived or whether it needs an amendment. Um, and in fact, this is something that actually functions very similar to the analyses that are uh, actually submitted to ARMA, because anyone can submit an analysis once you have um, a user um, a username, uh, but it's something that obviously requires people to actually uh, comment on and discuss. So, what's achievable? Um, the most obvious, considering where we are, is um, greater integration, I believe, with e-analysis. Um, specifically, in terms of the toolbox and the analytical events. There's some great um, great work done by Pierre Capri um, within e analysis where you can actually add um, analytical events into um, an analysis that you're creating in order to, for example, uh, type and morphology, the glue functionality of Pierre Benoit. All this has already been implemented and there's much more to come. Um, what could happen in that respect is that there could be potentially links to the ARMA website, the toolbox where people could get more information if they don't know what that an particular analytical tool is. And the other, the other way this could work is that if someone were to develop um, some, some notation system, they could perhaps create a library which then can be downloaded from ARMA and then imported into e-analysis so that people can actually use that within, uh, within their own context. So basically, it's greater integration with uh, other project parts. Um, and the other thing that I've been meaning to do, um, I've yet to do, but I'm certainly meaning to do, is interviews with specialists. And so these were actually put onto the ORMA website. And these will be split into two main things. Uh, most obvious is toolbox interviews, people who have um, developed methodologies for analyzing users, so interviews with people like that. But also, um, analytical interviews, so interviews with composers, and seeing the possibilities of actually, um, within an interview setting, how one might um, analyze the composer right there with you. So these are two things that I want to um, investigate in the future, and of course put onto ARMA for people to see. And finally, the potential, the, uh, the border in which um, I'm, I'm certainly thinking, and there's some, some interesting points that I want to bring up in terms of what could be achieved in that time frame, but what not necessarily uh, will be. But I'll bring them up first of all, is better profiles. This was something that was brought up to me um, from one user in particular who wanted to, I guess, deem it the MySpace of electricity music, in which they could show, have a profile with their music, with everything they're doing, so they can basically use it as a platform to uh, market themselves. And I, I said at the time that this is not something that we can necessarily do because uh, with the Creative Commons license, we can't have your files on the, on the, on the server without actually allowing it to be within that Creative Commons license. Um, but at the same time, the, the, the profiles that it allows you to do on ARM at the moment are very limited. So I'm certainly looking to, to expand them to actually have more information based on, um, on, on personal profiles. Um, but also, the potential of actually having links to things like SoundCloud, because I know a lot of composers tend to use that. Um, and that, of course, alleviates any issues of Creative Commons license, because it's not necessarily being stored on ARM itself. Um, and finally, those of you who, who know me um, or have been to the, the, the first ever postgraduate uh, presentation I gave when I was first coming up with the concept of ARMA might remember this diagram, but I, for the people that are composing, you won't know what this diagram is. Um, when, when I was in France for a year and I worked in an archive project in Casper, and that was before I came here to do the PhD, and, and it really interested me this idea of um, the archive. Leakage, and I just want to talk about potential poetic downfall, perhaps. Um, <laughs> please excuse uh, the um, particular semiotic nature and tripartition of this uh, diagram. Um, I, I was young when I started. Um, but this is where I considered um, ORMA situated when I first came up with the concept. So there's a program, e analysis, or whatever actual program you want to use. An analyst analyzes the work. This analysis is then put into this place here, which is ORMA and then this community maintains it. So from my initial, initial standpoint, I was con considering it very much an aesthetic part. But at the same time, I was considering what would be the possibility
possibility of actually um, having access to some of the creational material, um, specifically something from um, an archive package which has a uh, structure in place so that people can actually completely assess and understand what exactly is, uh, is being um, given to them. Um, and I've been in contact with people, um, specifically someone who is working on a Trevor Wishart archive, um, on the potential to actually incorporate some form of portal between the Trevor, uh, Tw Trevor Wishart archive and Orima, so that Orima participants can perhaps use that in order to see how, how that actually affects people's um, in, um, methodology when they come to analyze the work. Um, at this moment in time, it's uh, looking like it, it should happen, but there's still um, a few things that need to be ironed out. So, brief conclusion. Um, the main thing is I need to know what the community wants. Um, and, and that's the main thing. I, I, I come up with ideas based on what I believe the potential for armor is, but I need to know what uh, the people want to actually use it. Um, for that, I also need greater involvement so that um, I can assess what people are finding useful, what people aren't finding. Um, I also want to expand further. Obviously, we have the very, uh, various um, electronic <coughs> and audio-only games, but I would like to expand further, perhaps, to installations as well, something else that I'm very interested in. Um, and, of course, I want to investigate the impact that creational material has on the actual uh, analysis. And, and finally, uh, a new aim I came up with, uh, which is... Um, I I'll let you judge for yourself. Uh, which is what I would like Orima to become almost synonymous <laughs> with EA music analysis. Um, quite a biggie, um, but I think um, you have to reach the, the skies and the stars uh, in order to, to get halfway there at least. So, quick reminder, that's the, uh, the URL. Um, if you come up to the website, this is uh, the thing that's kind of dotted across the screen. Um, this is in the uh, left-hand side. You have creating your account. And as Manuela quite uh, showed me uh, at her presentation at the last symposium, we need more users um, using it. So that'd be great if you could uh, be online and contribute. Thank you. And then, of course, it's a repository. It calls itself a repository. Now, repositories exist in every university now and are net highly networked. Um, and they tap into things like Sightseer and all the, um, the crawlers, uh, Google uh, Citations Index, and so on. Mm -hmm. And every academic is also watching those, uh, looking, hopefully, for being cited and so on. And here's a, here's a tool that could you know, connect into that network to improve citation rates for academic articles. Sure. And that, that's what's going to give drive people Site is that sense of value that they can get from it to improve their own interests. It's a, a sort of collaborative self interest. Sure. Um, no, it's interesting you, you say that, um, Andrew, because specifically from, from my standpoint, I was really um, a bit concerned about going down that particular avenue, um, mainly because it, it almost it might feel like it would alienate certain people. Whereas, if you consider um, Wikipedia, for example, where it's a very much a different standpoint in terms of anyone and everyone, even the, the Penguin novel, let's be fair to say, which we brought up. Um, yeah. And I understand what you're saying, this, this idea of authenticity is needed. Um, well, the, the, the thing is, though, you're, you're, I mean, what you're, it's unlike a novel, in that everybody feels they've got a novel in them, right? Right, okay. Uh, but uh, how many people really feel they're electroacoustic music analysts? I mean, <laughs> very few. And they tend to be in these very I mean, there might be odd ones in outside, and they might feel alienated by that kind of activity you want, but I suspect, you know, you're, you're really dealing with quite a focused community of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the majority <coughs> of people, like I said, when I was initially um, going to say, log on to Arma, I've already been on Arma. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it really is a small community of uh, academics. Um, no, thank you. I
I don't, I don't know how I could do it yet, but I will look into it. So. I'm, I'm going to get some help. Great. Now, it seems to me we don't have one, anything coherent at the moment. This, this is an example. 